So, people that know me, uh, long-time viewers of the channel, will know that uh, I have a tendency to go over the top on things or overkill. So, you know, like this, uh, this CLC machine here I've got. I spent a lot of time, you know, going over every little aspect of it, you know, getting things like these brushes on it to improve things, improving the extraction, getting the holes right, getting it all perfectly level. And that's the thing, getting it almost perfect. It was almost perfect. Almost. Here it is then, the SCLC machine, or alternatively, the Super Cookie Leveling Contraption Machine. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, so, as you can see then, we've heavily upgraded this thing. Um, well, I say upgraded, we've completely changed uh, the thing altogether. We've gone from being able to do one cookie to, I believe, there's probably about 20 in this. So, yeah, it's got uh, a lot more capacity. And not only can it do um, masses of cookies at the same time, but I can also put uh, large slabs in this as well. So I'll start going over all the little extras I've done to this to make it uh, that much more efficient. So the base on this then, I went out and bought a kitchen countertop. So they're nice and cheap, um, so did the job. This one in particular, it's three meters long and 90 centimeters wide which is how it enables me to get the amount of size I've got in it. However, means as it's a chipboard, it's not really very supportive on its own. So on the top here then, I've got a three by two inch. Um, there's one on both sides and it's been plain, so it's perfectly level and they're the same height. But this is sitting on top of the um, countertop. And then on the underside of it, down here, I've got some two by twos. Uh, these are spread out, uh, what was it, 14 inches apart, uh, all the way along. And these are going across the table to stop any bowing there. Uh, and then on the side here, this board here, this has M8 bolts going into the three by two on the top, into the two by twos on the bottom, and then along here, We've got a bolt going into the actual countertop itself. And I've got these all spread out going all the way along. This is mirrored on both sides. And this means that this tabletop will not move at all as they are all working together to clamp each other straight. So that is how I can guarantee with this that it will not, everything I do will be flat afterwards. As you can see on the top here then, I've got these aluminium rails. They're actually Ironically, the sides for kitchen counters, um, the here to make it much easier for this, which is effectively the, as uh, my colleague keeps calling it, print head to slide back and forth on, as wood slides easier on metal than on wood. So, um, nice and easy. Um, I've got the same on this, so this here, Again, slide back and forth, and that goes there. Um, I've also got stoppers on this to stop this from um, coming off. Push it all the way back there. It's got a stopper on the other side to stop it being pushed off or too far across as well. So the sliding mechanism on this then. So on the bottom side of the plywood board here, I've got the same metal strips on this, so there's as little contact on the base here as possible. Again, making it easier to slide it, especially as there's a lot of weight on that, so I need it to be as easy as possible. And again, I've got this damp-proof membrane sheeting, which if I lift that up, whoop, you can see the gap where the router cutter goes. The point of this, of course, as it goes back and forth, the dust is isn't getting out because that's there uh, to stop it coming out. As the extraction turns on, that gives a slight pressure to keep that down as well. So it helps keep things contained. On the underside of this, then, um, so another important thing with these metal strips here is they're pointed this way with the metal folding down because there is a strip of wood under this 
which helps to keep it all contained within it. And because it's on that metal, on a small area, it helps to keep it contained with little friction. So the tray slides along on the metal strips here, and as you can see as we go along, these brushes are conforming to the shape of whatever is below it. So as I go in the gap with the cookies there, it's filling that gap, and on the cookies it's staying on top of them. And this helps to keep the extraction on it a lot more efficient, because obviously it's only got to extract the air from within this entire tray. And also the dust, any that fly off the router, are going to hit the brushes and stay within it. And as we go along it, it will also sweep anything to the ends, which makes it easier to clean up afterwards. Obviously it won't sweep anything that falls down there, but that's generally where the extraction will get it. On the side here as well, um, so we've got these boards here. They serve a few purposes. One is the same as the boards on the side of the actual table itself. Uh, it's a chipboard tray. So I've got uh, M8 bolts going along this board here to stop it from flexing and bowing down. Um, and they are also spaced perfectly so that the router table inside it fits perfectly. So again, that slides in there without any wobble. Whoop. So you can try and move that. That's the actual table moving. So it makes things a lot more efficient and easier. Don't have to wor worry about any movement. So unlike the previous design I made with the CLC machine, this is not sliding along a guide rail. Um, this actually just pops out of there and has a slot cut into a plywood board on the bottom here, which this then sits in. So we've cut a slot in the plywood, which fits the router in nicely. So we'll just put that back in. There we go. Right, there we go. And then we can adjust the height up and down there. So the ducting for this thing then, as you can see here, I've got two 100mm pipes going on both sides of the router, which then has one pipe on the top, which is coming from the ceiling. Originally, I was, we were thinking of putting just one pipe on the back side here uh, to give, extra, to give um, more powerful suction, but then realised that would cause a problem because it would never catch the dust that builds up on this side away from it. And that was pretty evident when the router is in the position it's in at the moment. So as you can see, this pipe here is off the table. And as I go back and forth along here, there's big piles up of dust along here. It's not too much of a problem because as soon as this router goes across the table and to that position, it disappears. The thing with the dust though, is it catches all the fine particles that get put into the air. So no, no, um, there's no particles in the air to irritate our, um, our throats. But it doesn't get any big chunks, which isn't too much of a problem, as as we go along the brushes tend to sweep it all off and we can clean it up afterwards to keep the flat surface. But it, it's just a, one of those things. I could make this more powerful, but that would require me to change all my extraction system to get um, better suction down to this point. As it is, it does the job fine. There's no dust particles getting into the air. Everything is contained within it. That's the key important thing with this. I've used, instead of um, buying actual dust extraction, dust extraction piping, just uh, ventilation piping from Screwfix again. I don't have to worry about this collapsing because it's all open anyway. So it doesn't have to worry about that. It's also a lot cheaper. Uh, and what we've got here, as you can see here, we've got a bracket system to all hold it in place so it doesn't move and it keeps it all solid. I could have done with this being a little different, as always, uh, as we put this a little bit too close to the router. So what we weren't cons um, didn't consider when we do did the holes was that this Y junction here is slightly angled. Um, well, angled in the wrong way, so yeah, that, that was a bit of a pain, but it's doing the job, it's fine, so let's carry on then. 
Next up then, we have the vice mechanism that I fitted into this then. So on the previous CLC machine, I used holes in the actual table itself, uh, which I put um, dogs into. And I tried to uh, fit them around the shape of the, the log rings like these. Obviously, uh, they wouldn't fit perfectly, so I had to use wedges. And doing that was very time consuming. So I figured I would try and do something similar to my workmates. Uh, so here we've got a vise which everything fits into. So along here, to start off with, this strip of wood stops the wood from going any further this way and the blade actually goes over this without touching the wood here so that this entire surface going along there is caught fully by the blade. Um, also gives a stop for the device mechanism. Along here we've got the, the threaded bar to this board at the back here. This block of wood here has a dowel in the bottom, in the bottom of it, which goes into this beam here, which has a slot because if there isn't a slot in it and these two clamp at different angles, um, it just wrecks the wood. So, yeah, it allows it to slide back and forth. Um, of course, as we tighten this up, that will blood in. Got the trusty spanner here. So, there you go. so as you can see, it does the job. Uh, it does take quite a while to um, clamp it by hand, though. So uh, that's where I have a, a drill attachment to speed this up massively. So, here we go. Put that on there, and... Wait, so just do that on both sides, and that'll clap things in uh, pretty well. Um, it's a lot quicker, obviously, because I've got lots of in here, and then uh, having dogs to fit. A key thing um, I didn't think of until, well, after I tried this, um, what I need to do is get uh, more boards like this that are fitted exactly along here because these will, as it gets tightened, just push out to the side and all become loose. Not a problem on a big slab, but on round things like this, multiples I'm putting together, um, it will move. So I need to get them, I'm going to get uh, multiples of these cut in so I can just stack them up along to uh, match hello, the size of uh, whatever it is fitted in here. Obviously, I can't do um, one strip all the way up here, the same as I would have on this, because otherwise the vise won't be able to clamp. So it has to be multiple that can just be dropped in at each point at the right distance for where the router stops as well. So I always know what I'm catching, wh where the router is going will be catching all of the wood that's in it. So the actual threaded bar part of the vise on this then, this is a M12 threaded bar, one metre long. I did want a uh, thicker, but uh, screw fix don't go above M12. So the thicker the bar you go, the less turns you have to make on it. But so far, it seems to be doing the job anyway. Um, on the very back here, there's a nut that's embedded into the table. Um, that definitely needs a lock nut or tight some sort of Loctite or some sort of glue in it to stop it undoing. It tends to undo as we release the vise and then the whole thing just comes apart. So that needs something to hold it together. Um, and this block here, so I've actually got one of the prototypes here. So the dowel we put off centre from this because that's where the nut goes in there. And what I used was one of these. So this is a joining nut, and the reason I went with one of these into the block is that way I have a good amount of spread inside it to stop it from turning. So put that there, see, got quite a bit inside the wood. And the way I got this in was I drilled the thickness of the nut from the flat side to flat side, 
part way down the block and then put this in a vise and clamped it in and I got it glued in as well. So that thing, I mean, we've tried bashing this with a hammer, it will not budge. So that means that it's gonna stay in there. And we'll always uh, move back and forth. What I could have done is possibly move the dowel um, more to the center so it's not sticking out as much on the table here. But uh, so far it's been doing fine. Now if we come over to the end here, so here I used the exact same uh, long nut on it. So I could uh, drill a hole for this bolt here. So that um, locks this all in, uh, which means that if I ever need to take this apart, I just take out this, this little bolt here, unscrew that off and the whole thing can come apart. Um, but it also meant that I could adjust the length of this to whatever size I needed for my spanner or drill bit. You don't want this sticking out too far because obviously it's sticking out the table as you're going back and forth, you can start snagging on it. So it's again something to be, uh, be wary of. I might start moving using the table from the other side. So I might flip this round and have it clamped from the other side. But for now, uh, we'll uh, leave it as it is and just play about with this a bit. So now these are all clamped in and ready to be leveled into table pl placemats. Check out visionlessdesigns.com. We'll now move on to the legs for this thing, which if you come down here, you'll see there are no legs. So as it is at the moment, I've just been placing this on top of my workmates. Um, I want this to be removable so I can uh, put it away nice and easy. Probably going to end up putting some um, legs on this that I can uh, take on and off with adjustable um, feet on it. Probably put uh, six on it just to give it um, a good bit of support. This ideally would have been better off as a centre in a room because uh, of its size. Um, have cupboards or shelves under this and have a remote slide off top because it's been a perfect um, height for working on. Uh, also this thing, it's really heavy, it takes uh, two of us to move it, it's not one person job uh, and we really don't like moving it too far either. Uh, so I might have to put wheels on the one end of it to wheel it into place before we lift it up. Again, we'll be playing about with that at the moment but problem with this design is I can't have this as my workbench at the back because it needs a lot of space at the back side of it for the sliding router to make it actually functional properly. So yeah, it's something that would go well in the center of a workshop, but for me, I need to be able to put my planer in the middle, so I won't do that. Right, so I think I've covered all the details of this new design now. So I'm gonna have a play about with this and just make sure I've got it all correct and I'll uh, do a full update video on it in use. So don't forget to get subscribed. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, don't forget to ask them down below, and I hope to see you in future videos. So thanks for watching, and see you next time.